Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with summaries of two of the Citizen Con panels, Breathing Life into Physics and Crafting Space. They go physics and cloth simulation, sign distance fields and gas cloud tech. Lots of cool little informational pieces here. I'm going to highlight the more interesting and useful stuff. Let's start with the presentation, Breathing Life into Physics. The presentation talked about the addition of physics simulation to assets and characters, with a lot of it being basically talking about cloth, or at least they were using cloth as an example. So starting with environments, wind, wind entities simulated versus canned animations. They prefer to use simulated physics rather than pre-canned animations. Basically, pre-canned animations would be a an animation which is used over and over again but isn't dynamically affected simulated physics would be fully dynamic this means that an asset will always act appropriately when exposed to environments or other entities wind players npcs explosions um ships thrusters all that sort of stuff they have wind on planets this can be based on the planet that you're on or the biome that you're in and they can have localized wind they can do lots of stuff with that they've had to remove all the old Lua code out of the game and rewrite everything for a 3D world. They have a wind area entity now, basically a sphere of wind that can be completely customized to any form of need. Basically, it's localized wind. They can go, in this area, we want wind to come down like this because there's a corridor or a mountain or because there's a set piece here or whatever. We can also use it for testing. Previously, wind may have been represented with a pre-baked animation so that they'd have like i don't know cloth on a box and it would just be blowing in the wind but there's no actual real wind it's just the animation making it look like wind but now cloth in environments will move based on how the wind is actually blowing and the wind is an entity and anything else that's dynamic and um, that happens to that cloth or object will also affect it. So like if a player steps onto it or there's an explosion or there's a thruster near it or there's something else under it that's moving. Pre-baked animations would obviously not react and just repeat their animation cycle. This extended cloth entity though, the one that is dynamic, allows for efficient simulation, easy editing, self-collisions, volumetric and deterministic simulation, gravity, friction, and much, much more. They've done a lot of work to avoid what they refer to as poly soup, where the cloth over time might bunch together in an odd way or be otherwise glitchy or, or odd. Um, they want it sort of like it can be stretched back out into cloth again or it will move again in, in different ways and can be reused repeatedly over the same scene. You don't want a tarp that is just blows away in the wind and then it's gone and it's regenerated. You don't want a um, sort of like... Um, a tarp or a piece of cloth to become a ball and have no more use uh, on the scene. So the system allows for objects, chips, characters, all that sort of stuff to directly interact with the cloth. They could hide under it, for example, or you could have a tarp over a ship. The way cloth can fold or collapse onto itself with this system is fantastic. It's a deterministic sim regardless of frame rate or time step size and the cloth will always be able to recover from any simulation without becoming a poly soup mess. You may have cloth assets blowing around areas or if a ship's engines start they may blow the cloth over into other objects or characters or whatever. Characters will be able to have cloth in their faces or on another ship's cockpit. It might be quite interesting if there's actually some form of technique or strategy to using cloth but at the moment they are just very cool set pieces and really add to the character of an area they might they might in the future be used to actually cover ships used for stealth reasons used to cover items or bodies and that sort of stuff from enemies that you don't want them to see that or, or, or that sort of stuff so yeah you maybe if you're in a player's base and you've just killed one of their npcs that's protecting the area you could put a tarp over them, put a bit of cloth over them. The player's not going to notice there's a dead person there. That sort of stuff. But you could also maybe cover your ship up. Maybe that will protect it from the environment. That sort of stuff. There's lots of cool things that could come out of this in the future. And we're going to see tons of this type of cloth and these sort of like um, items around the environments in the future too. So character cloth. They're unifying the way they do the character cloth with the environment stuff as well. So 
This will work in the same way, receiving dynamic info and simulating appropriately, moving away from the previous pendulum simulation they were using. This new vertex cloth approach allows for much more dynamic simulation and higher fidelity. The cloth will react to character animations much better and accurately. They will also be able to define what parts of cloth are rigid, so like attached to the character or armor, and which are also being simulated separately and moving. This will allow for many layers of cloth interacting and they want to give as much cloth on characters as possible, as much dynamic simulation as possible. And all of this works without clipping was the other thing that was beautiful. There was all this cloth moving around, jumping around with this character, flying around with capes and things, and it doesn't clip. Some future things that they're working on, deformables. So these are going to react to an explosive or explosion force and then become rigid. So they basically act as cloth or something um, cloth-like. So you could have the hull of a ship, for example, having a hole blown into it quickly. So that would deform the bulkhead and then it would become rigid again. So it would act like cloth briefly and then become rigid. They're also getting various performance improvements to the tech and getting it uh, better de density and that sort of stuff. Sign distance fields are gonna start to be used in the future as well. So. This is basically 3D textures that can store distance data as well. This is going to allow for better conforming of shields to the hulls, for example. We're going to see different shield sort of like um, formula. So um, the, the shields are going to be much closer to the hull. They're going to deform and shape with the hull. This is also going to be true of when areas are damaged or parts of ships have been destroyed or removed. You should see the sort of like shields um, contort and change with the new shape of the ship. Cloth will eventually be able to be torn, ripped, and holes shot through it. They are adding more soft body collisions and entities too. So these are things like squishy things, like pillows, or have that sort of texture and, and push. So it's going to be quite interesting to see uh, all of this stuff come together in the future. But the way their cloth works now is pretty amazing. There was also a presentation of crafting space creating the visuals of the verse. So the crafting space presentation focused on gas cloud tech and areas of interest in space that use gas clouds and nebula and stuff. So they can have these huge gas clouds and nebulas in space. They don't seem to like to use the word nebula, but I'll use it even if it's wrong. The issue is that these are massive and explorable. Uh, and therefore can be quite empty, but also quite resource hungry, nom nom nom, in the past. Asteroid fields around planets and moons are great for them. They allow dense pockets of content that can be interesting, and they're quite flat as well. So the rings around planets, asteroid fields, boom, they can do that quite easily. So this year, they've been looking at volumetric areas within clouds and large areas, that sort of stuff, creating corridors, signposting, and pulling you towards interesting spaces within giant gas clouds. They've been making these corridors and interesting spaces in modular sections around gas clouds. So they sort of pull you in and make certain areas safe and use VFX and lighting to sort of make these corridor areas and they might be like 40 kilometers long modular sections and then they're pieced together for various missions and vistas and they can be used procedurally as well visual effects and lighting should mean that you don't recognize any of these reused parts in the future either there's so much they can do with them to be honest that you'll hopefully never ever ever recognize them in, unless you're some sort of savant rather than rendering the whole gas cloud or doing some crazy stuff like that they actually render sections of the gas cloud in chunks and areas now and there's a hierarchy of chunks they all sit in a large chunk and then the closer you get to uh, one of these chunks the smaller chunks they break into areas that are proximate to a player basically small 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 chunks areas that are really far away from a player big chunks and that means that they are using different level of detail data uh, and renderings like uh, the, the large chunks will render uh, not as highly detailed, that sort of stuff. The chunks that are not needed or not being viewed are basically just culled out by the renderer, meaning that it's pretty damn efficient and much more efficient than rendering the whole gas cloud um, or bits that aren't visible. Um, and yeah, the, the detail is obviously based on the distance as well. They then efficiently simulate the lighting through the cloud, and then they can diffuse various colors into the cloud as well by literally breaking down the red, green, blue sort of spectrum, bam. And then they can have all these different sort of like colors uh, around based on 
what the background's like, what they want in this particular cloud, what the star's doing, that sort of stuff. They want these areas to feel dangerous as well, but for you to also not get lost. There is no geometry, walls, or ceiling here, so it's, it's an interesting way to build a level. And that's basically what they are. These are large levels, these gas clouds. They use a load of VFX to help signpost direction and help define dangerous areas. So you may see the movement of gas and objects in the uh, sort of cloud that you're in. EM interference on your system, so your hard MFDs and other screens. Um, that's going to get worse and worse, that interference, the closer you are to danger, the closer you are to more denser areas of gas clouds. Uh, they also use sign distance fields here as well to work out how close you are and apply the effects appropriately. So they work out exactly where you are in a cloud, how dense a part of the cloud you're in using these sign distance fields, um, how close you are to a gas wall or something dangerous, whatever. Um, they still have story and triggered events too, like an asteroid getting struck by lightning and then breaking apart. So they can have these triggered events as you're moving around. They also use a lot of lightning in gas clouds. And for this, rather than having some sort of crazy lightning generator, they use spline guided particle emitters for efficiency. And basically it just generates a, a, a cool little lightning bolt between two points. Done. Simples. Uh, contrails and turbulence are also affected in gas clouds based on density too. Everything needs a bit more polish though. Uh, they are getting the VFX procedurally generated in the future. At the moment, it's sort of like um, hand-placed, but the more of this stuff that is procedurally generated, the better, because then they can actually just go, well, we need to generate a... A giant new gas cloud for a mission or, or whatever in the future or uh, or generate missions within a gas cloud and they can have all the VFX procedurally done. Also, they want to get everything running as efficient resource-wise as possible. Frame rate's incredibly important to them, but so is getting as much detail in as possible. And they can get more detail in the more resource efficient they are. They basically can add more and more stuff and they can have more and more players and lots of other things. So um, getting that as, as efficient as possible is important for pretty much everything. Gas giants may also be made using this same tech, as could planetary rings and other areas of interest. Pretty much anything with clouds, I suppose. Um, no word on weather, though. So no words of whether they're going to use this sort of like gas cloud tech for clouds in the sky and dynamic weather. But we'll have to see. It might be a lot more simple to do dynamic weather than it is these giant large scale areas. And talking about large scale areas, they're going to be looking at even larger scale areas and points of interest and cool scenics next year. But that was basically it from those two presentations. I thought they were sort of semi-related because they're both to do with stuff looking cool. <laughs> I suppose a lot of stuff is, to, is tangentially related because of that. But please tell me on your opinions of those two summaries. Did you think anything was super cool? Uh, did you not like anything? Do you think they need to be working on something else at the moment? I'll also include the links to the full presentations for each of those, which are, I think one's half an hour, the physics one, and the other one's about 40, 45 minutes. Um, so they're pretty long, but um, yeah, check those out if you're interested. My radar have provided a new Anvil Valkyrie to give away. All you need to do is to be subscribed to my YouTube channel and then comment on any of my Star Citizen videos made during October. My radar is a mobile app for iOS and Android that provides up to the minute weather information in the US, Europe, and Japan, with service in Australia coming in the by the end of 2018. It allows Star Citizen players to view detailed maps of the moons in game as well. Yella, Selin, and Daymar. A new version will be released this month that includes new features, including outpost markers and updated maps. Also, if you're looking to get or upgrade a gaming PC, then consider Shadow instead. Shadow is a subscription-based cloud gaming PC service that can turn most devices, phone, laptop, PC, tablet, and more into a powerful gaming PC via the internet. Links to more info in the description for that. And if you do decide to try it, then use the code BoardGamer to get a discount on the service.